Okay, talking about change, well, that's fairly innocuous. And talking about perfect weddings, yeah, that may be a joke. That's, that's kind of funny. But this leads into, turns into, the problem of pain. We, you know, when we're asking why does God allow bad things to happen, what we're really asking is why doesn't God make our lives perfect? And when you put it that way, of course, your immediate reaction is, well, I, you know, I don't want a perfect life. Okay, if you don't want a perfect life, how far off perfect are you willing to accept? You know, I tell people my life is terrible. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a grieving widower. I'm a depressive. I have just been diagnosed with degenerative disc disease. I uh, previously was diagnosed with arthritis. Uh, my eyes aren't what they once were. You know, all of the old age is not for wimps. Uh, so, you know, I, I can say my life is definitely not perfect. But looked at objectively, my life isn't bad. I live in Canada. Nobody is dropping bombs on my house. You know, I... Uh, objectively, I live a pretty good life. You know, if I don't appreciate it because of a chemical imbalance in my brain or a, you know, improper mix of bacteria in my gut or a chemical imbalance in my brain caused by uh, an improper mix of chemical uh, bacteria in my gut. You know, objectively, realistically, there's an awful lot of people who have it worse than me. Okay, I'm going to sound like I'm changing topics here, and I'm not. Um, the Gulag Archipelago by Alexander Zolzhenitsyn. Uh, a lot of you have heard of it. A lot of you have... Uh, what you think is a Gulag Archipelago on your shelf. And, and I go into people's homes and I see it on their shelf and I know you haven't read that. Because if you had read it, you would realize you only have volume one. Because in English, it is, well, in the original, it's, it's I believe, seven books. Um, but in English, it's published, all seven books, in, in three volumes. And so if you've only got one volume there, You've got volume one, which is the only one that doesn't have a volume one on the spine. Volume two and volume three have volume two and volume three on the spine. So you would know. But if you only bought volume one, you think you've got the whole thing. And you haven't read it because you don't realize you haven't got the whole thing. So it's a work of genius. And I freely admit that I just about missed it. I, it took me... I, you know, I knew that it was important. It was supposed to be important literature. And so I worked at trying to read it. And it took me two years to get through the first 75 pages. You know, I just, ah, oh, this is boring. You know, great literature. Who needs it? And suddenly, you know, I, I'm persistent. And all of a sudden, after 75 pages in two years, suddenly something clicked. And I finished it off in two weeks, all 1,700 pages of it. It is a work of genius. It really is. And I, I recommend it to anybody who's got the persistence to read it. And for those of you who don't, uh, well, I'll pick some good stuff out of it for you. There is one, for example, where he's talking about, of course, it's a description of his time and other people's times uh, in the gulags, the prison system in the Soviet Union. And the one of the factors involved in this is that the government never admitted that they even had that system. And, and so when they transferred prisoners from one camp, gulag to another uh, they couldn't do it you know uh, 
dressing up the soldiers as soldiers and, and uh, the prisoners as prisoners and that sort of thing. They just, they dressed everybody normally and took them on normal public transit. And you were uh, allowed for a brief time to pretend to be a normal person and to be among normal people. And he said, it's bizarre. It, you know, you, you know everything has been taken away from you and you realize what's important in life. And you hear people talking about their troubles and they talk about the fact that their daughter-in-law doesn't give them enough respect and that a neighbor takes too much of a common resource and you know issues like this and he says you you know you don't realize you know we who have to had everything taken away we realize uh, that things can be taken away and we know what's important uh, what's important is your relationships your loved ones you know love them tell them that you love them make sure they know that because You can be taken away from them and they can be taken away from you at any time for a number of reasons. And, you know, that's what's important in life. And, and we worry and fret and complain about such minor issues. And that's one of the aspects, only one of the aspects of dealing with, you know, the, the problem of pain. We're, you know, why doesn't God make everything perfect? Why doesn't make God, you know, why does God allow this or that to happen? Uh, that is, you know, so much of what we worry about in, in that regard is unimportant. That's one thing. Uh, you know, uh, and, and there are additional things. We need to learn things. We need to be taught things. And, and some of the things we need to be taught, we can't even be told that we need to learn them because we don't have the, the basis to understand that fact until we have learned it. And, and so God has to teach us things before we figure out why we needed to learn them. Uh, that's kind of the point of Job. Uh, you know, God's answer in the end was, I'm not going to tell you. You know, I'm God. I created the universe. And they're just things that you don't know. Uh, there's another one that I think is underregarded, and that is it gives us an opportunity to help. You know, we, we are given uh, an opportunity to take on a job, to help, to, to address other people's real pain, real problems. And we, you know, we are given this opportunity. Why does a disaster happen? So that we can jump in in there and help, you know. What are you doing? Are you, are you in fact, preparing to help with disasters? Are you joining emergency support services? Are you volunteering with community policing? Are you, you know, all kinds of things that we are given an opportunity to help. And, and do we do that? Do we take that opportunity in this imperfect life? And ultimately, of course, you know, yeah, it's an imperfect life. It's our fault. We sinned. You know, we messed it up. God didn't intend this in the first place.